The latest version of Image Annotation Lab allows you to train your own object detector and use it to automatically annotate objects in your projects. This tutorial video demonstrates this new feature using a custom mushroom detector. Our dataset consists of 150 images of various mushrooms. The dataset is very small and not suitable for training a real mushroom detector. However, it is sufficient for the purpose of this tutorial. The mushrooms were mostly photographed in their natural environment. In total, there are about 10 different types of mushrooms in this dataset. First, we need to prepare our dataset for training the object detector. For this purpose, the objects, the mushrooms in our case, have to be annotated manually. To do this, we draw a bounding box around each mushroom. Sometimes the mushrooms are close together in larger groups. In such a case, it would be too cumbersome to draw each bounding box individually. Therefore, we mark the entire group with a single bounding box. It is important that you draw a bounding box around each object you want to find. Otherwise, the object detector will consider the unmarked objects as negative examples, and the performance of your detector will be worse. If you are unsure whether a certain object is suitable as a training object, but you also do not want to present this object as a negative example to the trainer, then you can mark such objects with a bounding box and mark it with an ignore flag. Such a bounding box is then crossed out in red. After you have marked all the objects on your images, we need to divide the images into two groups, training images and validation images. The training images are used to train the object detector, while the validation images are used to evaluate the performance of the detector. After each iteration of the training process, the detector is tested on the validation images, and the detector that performs best is our final result. Image Annotation Lab has a built-in feature that allows you to automatically split your dataset into training and validation images, according to a predefined split ratio. A common split ratio is 70% training images and 30% validation images. However, if you prefer, you can also do the split manually. Now, we are all set to start the training of our fancy mushroom detector. As a final step, we need to specify some training parameters like the number of training iterations and the type and amount of image augmentation. Image augmentation will randomly modify the training images during each iteration in order to artificially increase the number of different training images presented to the detector. This will improve the performance of the detector on unseen images. Currently, Image Annotation Lab offers two types of deep neural networks that can be trained for object detection. A lightweight standard model and a larger model. The larger model will usually give better object detection performance. However, the training time is about three times that of the standard model and is therefore only recommended if you have an NVIDIA graphics card on your computer. Depending on the speed of your computer and, especially, if you have a suitable graphics card, the training process can take from a couple of minutes to several hours. In order to allow you to continue your work while you wait, the training is running as a background process, and you can annotate other images in parallel. The training of this mushroom detector took roughly half an hour on a laptop with an NVIDIA 2080 Max-Q graphics card. Now let's have a look at the results. We thus apply the object detector to our set of validation images. Remember, these images are not used to train the detector and are therefore new to it. If we consider the very small number of training images for this quite difficult detection problem, the results are not bad. Sometimes, the detector will miss some objects and sometimes the bounding boxes need slight corrections. However, overall the results look good and can save you a lot of work on your next mushroom annotation project.